Welcome to the ForeclosureDeals.com video guide on foreclosure laws. The foreclosure process varies slightly depending on state and local foreclosure laws. Some states require the lender to sue the homeowner before the house can go into foreclosure. Other states allow the lender to foreclose without having to take the homeowner to court. Keep in mind that this video is only meant to serve as a guide to the different types of foreclosure laws practiced in the United States. Homebuyers interested in learning which foreclosure laws are practiced in their specific locations may need to research their state's laws. This is especially true for states where both judicial and non-judicial foreclosures are practiced. Typically, the foreclosure process in a judicial state begins when the homeowner defaults on a mortgage. In a non-judicial state, the foreclosure process may begin when the homeowner defaults on a deed of trust. A deed of trust allows a trustee to sell the home at auction if the loan goes into default. In a judicial foreclosure, the lender must sue the homeowner first. There are 25 states that practice both the judicial and non-judicial foreclosure proceedings. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Iowa, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nevada, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Oregon, Rhode Island, South Dakota, Texas, Virginia, Washington, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. In some of these states, one type of foreclosure is more common than the other. In other states, the type of foreclosure that's practiced depends on the type of home loan that's gone into default. If the homeowner signed a home loan containing a power of sale clause, the lender may foreclose on the home without having to take the homeowner to court. While there are 25 states where both judicial and non-judicial foreclosures can be practiced, there are 20 states that recognize judicial foreclosures only. In these states, homeowners can apply for mortgages to finance their homes, but they cannot apply for deeds of trust. As a result, non-judicial foreclosures are not practiced in these states. Among the states where only judicial foreclosures can be practiced are Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Nebraska, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Dakota, Ohio, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, and Vermont. The judicial foreclosure process begins when a homeowner defaults on the mortgage. The lender issues a lease pendants which alerts the homeowner of the default. It also alerts the homeowner of the lender's intent to sue in order to foreclose on the house. Homeowners are given a period of time during which they can alleviate their defaults and stop foreclosure. The best way for the homeowner to stop foreclosure is to pay back the defaulted loan in full. If this is not an option, the homeowner may apply for loan modification. If the homeowner is determined to keep the home at all costs, the homeowner may file for bankruptcy. If all else fails, the homeowner may arrange with the lender to sell the home as a short sale. If the homeowner does nothing to alleviate the defaulted mortgage, the lender sues the homeowner. It is the burden of the lender to provide sufficient proof in court that the homeowner defaulted on the mortgage. If the lender is successful, the judge will issue a notice of foreclosure sale and the home goes into foreclosure and is listed at auction. In judicial states, Foreclosure auctions are normally presided over by the courts or local sheriffs. Foreclosure auctions that are run by local or county sheriffs are sometimes referred to as sheriff sales. In states where both judicial and non-judicial foreclosures are practiced, homes may be sold by trustees, but this is more common for non-judicial foreclosures. There are 25 states that practice both judicial and non-judicial foreclosures, and 20 states that practice judicial foreclosures only. However, there are only five states that practice non-judicial foreclosures exclusively. Among these states are Michigan, New Hampshire, Tennessee, Utah, and West Virginia. Although it is not a state, Washington, D.C. also practices the non-judicial foreclosure process exclusively. However, the bordering state of Maryland is among the states that practice the judicial foreclosure process only. The state of Virginia, which also borders Washington, D.C., practices both the judicial and non-judicial foreclosure processes. 
The non-judicial foreclosure process begins when the homeowner defaults on the deed of trust. The lender issues the homeowner a notice of default. The purpose of this notice is to alert the homeowner of the default and of the lender's intent to foreclose on the house. The homeowner has time during this pre-foreclosure period to alleviate the debt. As mentioned previously, the homeowner may opt to pay the loan back in full, apply for loan modification, or file for bankruptcy. However, if these options are not possible, the homeowner may sell the home as a short sale. This is when the homeowner makes an agreement with the lender to sell the home for less than it is worth in order to pay back the defaulted loan. If the homeowner fails to alleviate the defaulted deed of trust or sell the home as a short sale, the lender will issue a notice of trustee sale. At this stage, the home has officially gone into foreclosure. This notice lets the homeowner know that a trustee has been given permission to list the home for sale at auction. Although it is still possible for a homeowner to reinstate the defaulted loan as much as five days prior to the auction sale date, the home is now in foreclosure. In both judicial and non-judicial foreclosures, the homes will be listed for sale at auction. Potential buyers will be able to make offers on the home on its scheduled sale date. It is always important for home buyers to research their state and local foreclosure laws because they may have to complete certain requirements depending on the foreclosure process followed. Home buyers in judicial foreclosure states may be required to provide proof of their ability to pay for the homes they purchase. In both the judicial and non-judicial foreclosure processes, homes that fail to sell at auction or are purchased by their lenders become real estate owned or REO properties. Some smaller lenders may have these homes sold for them by third-party real estate agents. However, larger lenders, such as major banks and government agencies, may sell these properties themselves. While the majority of the United States practices both judicial and non-judicial foreclosures, certain states practice one foreclosure process exclusively. A judicial foreclosure occurs when a homeowner defaults on a mortgage and is sued by the lender. In a non-judicial foreclosure, the homeowner defaults on a deed of trust and the lender does not need to sue to foreclose. Even in states where both judicial and non-judicial foreclosures are practiced, one foreclosure process may normally take precedent over the other. The determining factor for which process is followed may depend on whether the home loan contained a power of sale clause. This clause allows the lender to foreclose on the home without suing the homeowner. This concludes the foreclosuredeals.com video guide on foreclosure laws. To receive the latest news on the real estate industry, follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook. You can also follow our RSS feed. If you would like to know more about foreclosure laws or foreclosures in general, visit foreclosuredeals.com. If it's not a deal, we won't list it here.